Stories can be an extremely important resource for RE, able to engage pupils in a deeper level of religious understanding. But ARIAC, the Association of RE Inspectors, Advisors and Consultants, has suggested that the use of story is not always as effective as it could be. I think storytelling is an art that is yet to be fully, um, fully experienced by many RE teachers. Many, some RE teachers might be frightened of it. The idea in story is to engage the child when thinking through uh, a situation presented to him in a different traditional text. Laurie Rosenberg is passionate about storytelling. His approach is to incorporate the Jewish technique of paradez, asking the pupils to look at the story from four different dimensions. What does it say? What does it mean? What is the story? And what is the hidden meaning? In Laurie's Year 6 class, pupils reenact the story of Abraham and Isaac as a way of exploring the story's four dimensions. In future lessons, they will then be able to develop each dimension further. We feature Laurie's lesson to showcase storytelling as an effective way of engaging pupils, to highlight some of the practical issues involved, and to offer some guidance on how to use this approach effectively. All right, learning intention today, what we're going to be doing is looking at a story from the Bible, right, from the Torah, and then dividing into groups, going to take a different part of the story, and then you are going to reenact it to everyone else. The main objective was to make the Torah come to life and also to get them to understand that you can deal with text in more than one dimension. So, our four dimensions. Pashat. Literal. What does it say? The literal meaning. Remez. Interpretation. What does it mean? Drash, which is a Hebrew word for story, and Sa'ad, the hidden. Story is all about narrative, it's all about people, it's all about characters, it's all about text, it's all about uh, a script, if you like. It's bringing to life something which could be quite dry and didactic. We're going to go take one story from the Bible. It's the story of Abraham and Isaac. So I'm going to give you now a copy from the Torah. Children engaging with the text will pick up a lot of transferable skills to all areas of the national curriculum and beyond. It enables the children to use their imagination, their curiosity and their creativity in order to explain quite difficult concepts but in a way in which they will understand it. And he said, please take your son, your only one, whom you love, Isaac. This is one side of a conversation, isn't it? So we try this out. You put in the other bit of the conversation. Please take your son. Which one? Okay, good. Your only one. I have two. Excellent, excellent. I have two. Whom you love? Oh, Isaac. I love them both. And they go, and then God goes, Isaac, right? In any traditional text, you have to you have to break down the historical context. Setting the scene is absolutely essential, describing the main characters. I described Abraham as living in this area of the Middle East, brought in the fact that it was hot, he had servants, um, he had a wife. So by breaking down this idea that a traditional text is something that, uh, you know, it's nothing to do with me, you have to try and contemporise it. Why did he wake up early in the morning? Bit of remez now. It must have been a long journey. Excellent. Him. Excellent. It must have been a long journey. You imagine the scene. If he'd sort of got up a bit later, maybe what? Uh, Sarah would have uh, stopped him from doing it. Hundred percent. Where are you going? <laughs> right, you know, I'm going to kill your son. Get back into bed. So, in other words, so by waking up early, that's another little scenario. And the two of them went together. What does that mean? The two of them went together. Um, it shows that they are still together, they still love each other. Excellent. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to store to his son. What a wonderful bit you can put into your story, can't you? Isaac says to his dad, tie me tightly, dad. I don't want to flinch when you put the knife on me. Why did he slaughter the ram? Maybe when your brain sends a message, you, you're just like, you have no control and Brilliant. you just do it. Brilliant, Sasha. So. Brilliant. He was, he, was, he, said, he, he was full of it. He was going to kill his son. Can you imagine? The adrenaline was burning through his body. He had to do something. And for God or the angels to realise this, 
he killed the ram instead. If a non-specialist wanted to do this kind of work, I would challenge them to do it through the dimensions of Paradis. Yes, Jews may have invented it, you can use it in any way. It could be some of the wonderful tales from the Guru Nanak in Hinduism. It might be this, the, what Muhammad has said uh, in Islam and in the Quran. Using Paradis, you can actually break down some of the um, resistance to using traditional text. And what we are going to do now in our groups is to take a different part of the story and we're going to try and enact it. We should have four different parts. Hopefully, Emechi, it will make the whole story. That's Sarah. I made her. You're God. You're an angel. You're an angel. Just leave him alone. I'll go. How are you going to get the idea of three days passing? What are you going to watch? Lights, but we're going to do it in the real lights. Yeah. In the where? In the real lights. The real lights. So, just like a... so day and night, in other words. Yeah. In rehearsal, I was going around to different groups. In your eyes, ask the questions. The Abraham with his knife above Isaac, and I wanted them to make eye contact. I wanted to see whether those children who are quite bright, could actually engage in non-verbal communication between the two. But it's actually in the eyes, the two, you know, why are you doing this to me? Could you do this? But you're not, but you're showing it in your eyes. It's really difficult because the conversation's not written out, so we don't know what the conversation was. These are elements of a really good story. Ordinary people caught up in something metaphysical, something exciting. And to get the children, even the year six children, to actually explore the nuances. That's the art of story. So what I want to do is maybe if we, if each group just shows what it's done so far. Abraham, um, please take us on. Whoa, 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 stop, 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 hang on. Weren't you going to be a bit surprised? Yeah. Because you said, oh, yeah, OK. So do you want to take that bit again? Abraham. Oh, gosh. Tell me it's not him again. Please take your son. Which one? <laughs> God, you're supposed to be omniscient. You're supposed to know everything. I know, that's, that's, yeah. what, that's what I purposely did. Oh, yeah, you purposely yeah. did. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Because I forgot his name. OK, all right. Stories can take a lot of different forms. It can be brought to life through ICT. It's quite easy to download a piece of text and um, make it into a story and then make it into a PowerPoint presentation. Another way that children could present their work is in a storyboard, a series of simple structures to enable them to deconstruct the story. And then afterwards, I could have collected them all, we could have had a lovely display. So there's plenty of ways we could have done that. Abraham hid underground. No, no, whoa, 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 Michelle, I think you need to explain it, because I don't know, what are these? What are these things? The non-specialist RE teacher has to be absolutely confident to use the text. There might be a, you know, a fear of using a traditional text do it through a contemporary text and deconstruct that along the four dimensions that I've talked about. <laughs> Abraham, Abraham, what are you doing? <laughs> if you look at the text, what you actually say is, Abraham, Abraham, do not stretch out your hand to kill your son, for now I see you, you uh, can obey God. As they get older, yes, they might revisit the story in different forms. By the time they get to year six, they, they should be quite sophisticated in the, way they, in the way in which they deal with this particular piece of text. What are you going to show, exasperation? Bit of annoyance? Yes. Well, go on then, show me. Oh, what do you want now? <laughs> yeah, all right. How are you going to convey to everyone else in here that you're travelling for three days? We've got a light engineer, Sabrina. Right. <laughs> she, she, she's going to be saying day one, day three, and, and she's going to be using the lights. Right. OK, this group. How eyes. do they connect without talking? Eye contact. Show me a conversation with your eye. No, oh, that looks like he died. <laughs> All, right. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to put it all together and hopefully it will be like one seamless, well-oiled machine or it could be a total catastrophe. Whatever happens, whatever happens, I think you've probably understood more about this piece of text than you did before, OK? So I'm going to be the commentator. So Year 6 Productions proudly presents Vieira, The Binding of Isaac. This is... The ten tests. This is the first test. Abraham hid underground for 30 years from King Nimrod. This is the fifth test. <laughs> <laughs> this is the seventh test. Go 
God tested Abraham and said to him, and let's see what happens. Abraham! <laughs> oh, do it, not him again. Please take your son. Which one? Isaac. <sighs> By getting them to reconstruct the story, it means that I have I am checking intuitively whether or not they've understood the story. If they can do that, they've understood it. Isaac, Israel, get up! Ow! What's that? We're going on a journey. You're not hitchhiking again, are you? No. I can't. What do we need to take? We need the firewood. We need water. Um, go on, go get them. And the donkey. We're there yet? We're there yet? No. We're there yet? We're there yet? Oh! Are we there yet? Yes. What? Yes. Oh, I, can't see. I don't see anything. Where is Israel it? Where is it? Where is it? stay with the donkey. Good. Yeah. On the third day, Abraham raised up his eyes and perceived the place from afar. And Abraham took the wood for the offering. And that's the next bit of the story. Does that mean I have to get on this? Yes, it does. Abraham, Abraham! Here I am. Do not stretch out your hand against the lad, nor do anything to him, for now I know that you are a God-fearing man. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as an offering instead of his son. And that is the story of the binding of Isaac. Well done, everyone. Thank Give you. yourself a round of applause. Well done, everyone. That was brilliant. I think children should be urged to dive into text, not just take text at face value. I have done this work with groups of children throughout the United Kingdom and also in, in other countries as well. And it works. It gets them to understand that text is something to dive into. We've looked at text through these four dimensions. What bits of it surprised you? When um, Abraham took the ten tests and he, um, he managed to do them, but mm -hmm. not hurting anyone. Nathan? Um, I didn't know about um, Ishmael coming as well. Ah, good. That was something you hidden. If we had more time, what would you like to explore? What would you have liked to explore with that story? Nathan, uh, Sam? Um, more of um, what isn't said. Good boy. Abraham and Isaac operate at different levels. What was the conversation that was taking place when Abraham and Isaac was lying there and he held the knife above him? What was the narrative? And what's the meta-narrative? What's going on in the whole thing? You can do this for any piece of work. You can look at a piece of text now and look at it through these four dimensions. So I can tell you, you can take this whole of this Torah and make it into a story, a drama. Make it into literature. Make it into a soap opera. It's the best soap opera I've ever seen. The one thing I want my children to take away with me is the buzz of enjoyment. The buzz that they have really found and learnt something new, but in doing so at the same time, they have enjoyed themselves. And I think that enjoyment was palpable. Or as in Ofsted speak, the learners were full of enjoyment. It's nice to just have a whole day talking about one subject, uh, going into more detail. It was just great to, to have a whole day of, of learning something fascinating, yet moving. Thank you very much, folks. Well done. Give yourself a round of applause. You've done well. To see how other stories may be broken down into the four dimensions, please go to www.teachers.tv.